Hey guys, Joel Bridenwell here. Thanks for joining me on Select the Bible Topic Tuesday. If you haven't seen the Marriage and Family Monday yet on making sure your family's in the proper order, the priority, uh, take a look at that. Feel free to comment. Uh, next time I'll be dealing with Witnessing Wednesday and the uh, power of video uh, in sharing the gospel. But on Select the Bible Topic Tuesday, uh, most people said they would like to hear about predestination. So it can be a controversial topic. Not everyone agrees with me, but I want to try to uh, interpret according to God's word because he's he's the standard his words the standard and you think about predestination there's a few places the word occurs there's a few places the concept occurs and there's a few terms that are used overlappingly not synonymously but overlappingly with uh, predestination and so predestination simply means that God plans out someone's destiny ahead of time uh, predestination pretty simple from there, and of course, this tends to go with planning out their salvation, that the fact that they'll, their destiny will end up in heaven ahead of time. And some people say, well, that robs us of freedom. Uh, some use the word free will. I prefer the term human responsibility. We still have responsibility to turn from our sins and trust in Jesus. Uh, but listen to some of the texts that talk about predestination. So uh, Ephesians chapter 1 mentions it a couple times in verse 5 and verse 11. Verse 5 says, In love he predestined us to be adopted as sons. Uh, through Jesus Christ for himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So this is tied to adoption. He does it out of love. At least that's the way I read verses 4 and 5. Uh, there is a translation issue there, but I think that coincides with Romans 8, 29, uh, when it talks about those whom he called. Uh, I'm sorry, those whom he foreknew, he also um, predestined uh, to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. I think foreknew there. This is probably another topic for another day. I think that means for loved. I think it's a set his affection on it ahead of time. It's a, it's a relationship term we find in Scripture. And so when Ephesians 1, 4, and 5 talks about in love he predestined us, I think he does it out of love. He sets his loving affection upon us ahead of time. It's, it's also out of his grace. Uh, Romans 9 talks about election. Election's an overlapping term of predestination. And how God elected uh, Jacob and not Esau by his grace before they'd done anything good or, good or bad. Uh, we also see Ephesians 1 down verse 11, in him we also receive an inheritance that is in Christ because we were predestined according to the plan of the one who works out everything in agreement with the purpose of his will. So he predestined us, and this is uh, something we receive an inheritance because we've been predestined. So we're going to receive an inheritance, an inheritance of glory, an inheritance in heaven for those who are believers. Why? Because God is predestined. He's already planned our destiny out ahead of time. Again, he does it by his love and by his grace. It's nothing in us. We don't get to pat ourselves on the back and say what good people we are. We simply praise God for what he does. The praise of his glorious grace is what scripture says. Uh, we know that Jesus himself uh, had been predestined to offer up his life for us. We see this in Acts chapter 2 when Peter says it was according to God's uh, determination and foreknowledge ahead of time. So he planned out the uh, and determined ahead of time what would happen with Christ. Uh, we also see something like this in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, says we are redeemed not with, a, uh, not with gold and silver, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, a lamb uh, slain before the foundation of the world. So uh, foreknown before the foundation of the world. So the idea of foreknowing there is connected to uh, predestination. It was planned out ahead of time. God set his affection on Christ and he died and, and planned his death before the creation itself. And just as he planned our salvation, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 7 says, that In God's wisdom, he predestined us before the ages, that is before time itself. And so God planned Christ to die for us, die for sinners, even before time began. He knew and uh, had actively included, passively included uh, sin in his plan so that he could turn around and predestine. Uh, he could uh, plan our destiny out ahead of time by his grace and out of his love so that when people get redeemed, when people come to saving faith in Jesus, uh, they don't pat themselves on the back. They give all the praise uh, to God for his great work in planning out this in advance and then working through us to repent and believe. But predestination is him planning that out in advance. It's interconnected with all these other glorious truths of God's calling, uh, regeneration, justification, uh, the conversion aspect, and so forth, so much more. But uh, predestination is one of those links in the chain of salvation that we see in Romans 8, 29, and 30. And those he predestined be conformed to the image of his son, 
Uh, and those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. Those whom he justified, he also glorified. He's always talking about the same group through Romans 8, 29, and 30. Those whom, those whom, those whom. So it's not that he foreknows everybody. He sets his loving affection on some, predestines those, calls those inwardly, drawn them to himself, declares them right with him when they turn in from their sin and trust in Jesus, and then plans their glory. And so it's a great truth. It's a great promise. It's great hope. Great praise goes to God for all that he's done for us out of love, out of grace, and predestining his people. I'll deal with the issue of double predestination another time. I don't want to make this video too long. I don't think the Bible teaches double predestination, but there's some that do. So I'll, uh, I'll deal with that one another time. But uh, God bless you. You keep wrestling with the scriptures. Keep looking to see what it says and keep praising the Lord through all things. See you again soon.